Okay, this video is a book review of this book right here, Start Solution by John McDougall. Um, it's probably his best book. He's written a bunch of great books, but this is probably his best one. Uh, right at the beginning it says, Starch has unlocked the door to good health for thousands of patients. And I can tell you, out of all the things I've ever learned since I've been studying biology and stuff since, you know, gosh, I don't know, since I was a teenager, the most important thing I ever learned was humans should eat starch. And that's what Dr. McDougall says from his book, <clears throat> Starch Solution. He says, the most important point to get out of this book is people should eat more starch. The more starch they eat, the healthier they are. And something as simple as that determines the entire health of the vast majority of people. Okay, um, in Hawaii, this is what he says. In Hawaii, he worked with uh, the plantation workers. He took care of them. <clears throat> and they were manual laborers. And um, he was amazed at how healthy they were. They were typically eating their traditional diets. They'd often migrated to Hawaii from other Asian countries like China, Japan, Korea, Philippines. He also noticed, you know, later on that when he would take care of patients, let's say in California, the grandparents eating the old-fashioned, you know, largely rice-based diet were skinny and healthy. Then the intermediate generation was a little bit fatter and sicker. And then the kids, the grandchildren, were really fat and sick because they had taken on the... American, standard American diet, you know, full of animal foods, oils, and processed food. Okay, uh, so again, getting back to when he just finished his internship, this was in the early 1970s, he had noticed that, you know, nutrition was never mentioned in his medical school, in his textbooks, or in residency. You'll almost never hear it mentioned, and I had the same experience. Um, but it was this observation of seeing that these manual laborers eating old-fashioned, low-fat, plant-based diets were really skinny and healthy compared to the people living in the big cities in Hawaii. He also worked with, you know, the highly educated, wealthy people, and they were fat and sick. You know, lots of cancer, impotence, coronary artery disease, diabetes, hypertension. Uh, uh, then he continues. It was this observation about the health of the low-fat plant eaters that enabled me to take patients off ineffective pills and to protect them from risky surgeries and to offer them a simple way to lose weight. And then he says, I went to the Hawaii Medical Library and saw study after study that described weight loss, relief of chest pain, headaches, arthritis, all owing to a simple solution, a diet based on starch, supplemented by vegetables and fruits. No pills or surgery were needed. And so that was the big secret right there. Okay, and then he studied it like crazy. McDougall's really smart, graduated first from his med school class. He's very studious. He spends a lot of time reading. He really knows a lot of real useful information. Um, when, he's, when he got, and remember, I've told you guys, when, you, when somebody becomes a great doctor, like in sports, if you become a great athlete, everybody loves you. Your own team, your coaches, the fans, even the opposing teams will respect you. It's not like that in medicine. The better a doctor gets, the more the medical system hates them. Okay, it's bizarre, but the reason is they don't want these patients getting better. As soon as you cure a patient, you lose a customer. You don't make any money off healthy people. Okay, so it's weird and it's bizarre, but even though individual doctors really want to help the patients, most of them, the entire system through the insurance companies, the big drug companies, it's designed to get as much money out of the patients as possible, and their health is irrelevant. It's quite irrelevant. They actually don't want them healthy because then they're not going to come in begging for pills. Okay, so listen to what he says when he worked at St. Helena's Hospital, which was a Seventh-day Adventist hospital in Napa Valley, California. He says, in my 16 years at St. Helena's, I never, never once received a referral from one of these doctors, though I occasionally cared for the hospital's own physicians or their spouses and children. So the doctors would come to him to be taken care of and get his advice. They would send their family to Dr. McDougall, but they would never send him a patient. That would be a loss of money. And they, would, and they you know, they don't invite you to teach everybody. I, I can tell you too, lots of people have seen me lecture on the internet. I've never once ever been invited to speak about nutrition or any of this stuff to a conventional medical audience. Okay. A rather bizarre thing, don't you think? McDougal, <coughs> McDougal is not in any of the books. I've gone through all the medical books, backwards and forwards. He's never, ever mentioned. Uh, I recently went through a textbook of immunology at, from the Harvard textbook. i got it right over here somewhere. Here it is. Ooh. Sorry about that. So here's the book. Sorry, i got a bunch of heavy books on top of it. I just went through the Harvard textbook of immunology. Not, and there's, there's no mention of leaky gut. There's no explanation of leaky gut. It's the most important thing to cause autoimmune disease. It's not in the book. Okay, how incredibly ridiculous is that? And that's what I mean 
I go through the pathology books. This stuff's not there. You won't find Esselstyn in coronary artery disease. You won't find uh, T. colon Campbell in cancer. You won't find McDougall in uh, autoimmune disease or any of the other things that he's an expert on, world famous. Okay, so anyways, why is starch so good for you? Because starch, it's a polymer of glucose. So you got a bunch of glucose molecules all connected to each other. That's a polymer. Polymer, you know, multiple copies of the same thing. And then it's wrapped in fiber. So when you eat that, it goes into your stomach. Stomach muscles kind of grind it around. Stomach acid mixes with it. But it still takes a lot of time to separate the fiber from the glucose and to chop the individual glucose molecules into separate units. And then they travel through the small intestine. And then they're absorbed from the intestine into the blood. That's a slow, time-consuming process, which is what you want it to be. What that does is it causes a slow increase in blood glucose level, and it remains, and then it comes up a little bit, gradually comes back down. So you have a normal blood glucose a prolonged amount of time. You're in the zone. You feel good. You're not hungry. You've got good energy. And that's why you're skinny, because you satisfy your hunger with the least number of calories when you eat starch. Out of everything I've ever learned in my 30-plus years of being a doctor, the most important thing I ever learned was humans should eat more starch. And the reason is that's what makes people healthy. And that's what I meant by, you know, pre-med education, medical school education. It's a big joke, okay? It's a pretend education. What is calculus to do with this? Okay, it's got nothing to do with it. All this mathematics, physical chemistry, physics, it's all irrelevant, okay? So this fake medical education, I think what it's designed to do is like, you know, doing a car commercial to sell a car. You put a pretty girl in front of the car and, you know, there's a subliminal message. You know, you buy the car, you get the woman, okay? I mean, what I'm trying to say is the implication is that the medical doctors are highly educated, well-trained, very bright, and know what they're doing. But the reality is they've just wasted all this time of their life jumping through hoops that's irrelevant to taking care of a patient for the chronic diseases, which is the vast majority of patients. Okay, so anyways, that's why starch is so great. Here's some common starches. Potatoes, only 1% of calories from fat. Sweet potatoes, only 1% of calories from fat. White rice, 1% of calories from fat. The lower the percentage of calories from fat, the skinnier the population. Quinoa and oatmeal in the ballpark of around 15% of calories from fat. Uh, peas, I forget the exact number, probably like 5%, something like that. Lentils are 3% of calories from fat. Black beans are 4% of calories from fat. Garbanzos are a little heavier, about 13% of calories from fat. The lower the percentage of calories from fat, the skinnier the population. So if you want to be skinny, eat things with very little fat in them. Okay, now we go into just a little more detail on these uh, postprandial blood glucose curves. So here's the starch again, slow, upswing, stays normal, a prolonged amount of time, satisfies your hunger with the fewest number of calories, and it's the golden mean, like the Goldilocks zone, where you want to be. Good energy, you feel good. All right, so when you eat the real sweet drink, let's say you drink soda pop or something, you'll spike your blood glucose rapidly, pancreas overcompensates, secretes too much insulin, blood glucose comes down kind of fast, and... Um, you then feel lousy, you get this rebound hypoglycemia, you'll often guzzle some more soda pop, and you end up with a roller coaster blood glucose curve constantly going up and down. That's bad. All right, but then here's another thing added to this graph is this red line, and this stands for IR is for insulin resistance with CHO intolerance, carbohydrate intolerance. So when you eat the fat along with the carbohydrates, the fat gets into the skeletal muscle first, and it causes insulin resistance, especially, you know, sat fat, for example, inhibiting complex three of intermitochondrial membrane electron transport chain. And that then sends a signal to the plasma membrane and the skeletal muscle cell. Do not take up any more nutrients. We are overwhelmed as it is. So the glucose type 4 transporters don't go up to the plasma membrane. And thus the blood glucose can't get into the skeletal muscle cells where normally it should primarily go after eating a meal. So you have prolonged, sustained high blood glucose, hyperglycemia. That's insulin resistance. That's diabetes. Okay, so what I'm basically saying here is you eat the starch, you come out of it good. If you drink soda pop and these sweetened processed foods, you end up with rebound hypoglycemia that leads to obesity and all kinds of problems. You're screwed. Okay, if you eat high fat meals, you'll end up with a lot of insulin resistance and you're not going to do well in the long run going down that path. Okay, so you win the game with starch. I think fruits are better than a lot of people think. Uh, we won't get into that too much right now. Okay, let me go to some more quotes from Dr. And I brought the page numbers in here too from the book Starch Solution. So Dr. McDougall says, I've often been asked, why do you speak against the practices of fellow physicians? And my answer is simple. I never took an oath to protect the financial interests of the medical industry. I did take an oath to care for the sick and to try to keep them from harm. Yeah, I can tell you, he's a very brave guy because the medical system would hate his guts for going directly to the patients and trying to help the patients. Um, 
Let's see, the next thing is starch should be our primary source of digestible carbohydrate. Digestion of starches is a slow process that gradually releases the sugars from the starch, which then goes from the intestine into the blood. Yeah, it's like a slow release energy pill. Okay, um, fruits offer a quick burning energy, mostly in the form of simple sugars, but little of slow burning sustaining starch. As a result, fruits alone will not satisfy our appetites for very long. Okay, excuse me. So the point of that is that really sweet fruits, in particular like something like a banana or something, can kind of cause you uh, rebound hypoglycemia in some people and not satisfy hunger so well. You don't get that early satisfaction of hunger as well either from the fructose as you get it from the glucose coming from a starch. However, I would say, this is one spot where I differ a little bit with Dr. McDougall. I've seen a lot of really healthy people and a lot of really skinny people who eat a lot of fruits. But fruits are a problem in some ways. Here's why fruits are a little bit of a problem. Number one, they don't store for so long. Number two, they're often seasonable, less available compared to starches. Number three, fruits are often relatively expensive. Number four, there's a tendency nowadays to spray more stuff on them, which I don't like. You know, they're spraying that AP, you know what stuff on the apples more and more. I don't like that. Um, anyways, next thing Dr. McDougall says, the average American diet is about 70% meat and dairy, about 5% fruits, about 5% veggies, and 20% starch. Okay. The McDougal diet is 0% meat and dairy. That's a very important point. He says the most important thing is stop with the meat and the dairy and the oils. No meat, no dairy, no oils. Zero, none. Okay, about 10% fruits, about 20% veggies, and about 70% starch. I've even heard him say you can eat, you know, 90% of your calories from starch and you'll do really well. Um, beverages, the best uh, choice, for, the best choice for uh, what to drink is just drink water. Okay, then he continues, we humans are built to thrive on starch. The more starch we consume, the healthier we become. Starches include rice, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans, peas, barley, millet, oats, rye, sorghum, wheat, and squash. If you just take one message from this book, it should be eat more starch. Humans are starchivores. So yeah, like I said, that's the most important thing I ever learned is humans should eat more starch. And once you get that and you just start eating a whole bunch of starch, you can pretty much fix your other problems later. You'll likely make such dramatic progress. That's a real important point. And if you go around watching all these other nutrition experts, you'll see that almost none of them tell you this. You need to know this because it's how you satisfy your hunger. Starch satisfies hunger. And what happens to a lot of people is they try a plant-based diet, but they don't figure out how to satisfy their hunger and they go, oh, screw it, I just can't control my hunger and they go back to eating other things. So you need to know this to satisfy your hunger and then you can work out the other details later. Okay, so that's the end for now of part one from my book review of the Starch Solution. I'll do uh, I'll do additional parts on it because you know it's a detailed, extensive book. So 